So welcome to today's video. And in this video, we're going to talk with Cindy Kristen, who is with American Cruise Lines. And Cindy and I talked a while back about accessible cruising on American Cruise Lines to Alaska, some of the things that they, you can see and do up there. We're going to talk now about what we can do a little closer to home, talking about New England. So uh, welcome to today's video, Christy. Hi, Ken. Good to, me good to be here. Okay, so you guys uh, cruise in New England, and so let's talk about what there is to see and do up there, some of your itineraries, and what's accessible as far as uh, cabins and as far as uh, excursions that you know about. Okay, well, you know what, it's summertime, you know, we just um, had Memorial Day weekend, and now we're looking to enjoy the summer. And so during the summertime, we go up to New England and we do these beautiful itineraries along the East Coast here, the Northeast Coast. And uh, we've got these nice little small coastal ships. I'm going to show you some pictures of them today. But we've got great itineraries that we do during this time um, through actually but through about the end of October. Um, so it's uh, really a lot of fun, fun. These are really unique little ports that we go into. And um, we're, we're operating full steam ahead. And actually we just started our New England programs over this, over this past weekend. And uh, we started with our new Cape Cotter, which is actually a new itinerary for us. And um, I just wanna show you some of the uh, itineraries that we have. Um, it's always so beautiful up there to um, go in during the summertime with the beautiful lighthouses and the historical sites and the coastal views. I mean, it's just really a magical time and um, it's really enjoyable. I guess here I have my main coast, which is, I'll start off with this one uh, first. Um, this is actually, we operate on one of our smaller coastals, which is only 100 guests. And you can see we actually start in Portland, Maine, and uh, we visit these beautiful ports along the way, uh, Boot Bay Harbor, Camden, Belfast, and Castina Bar Harbor. Um, you can see, you know, how cute the little towns are, very quaint. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a lot of fun being in this area. I've, I've actually been to Maine one time and I, I really enjoyed it, but, you know, they're known up there, of course, for their wonderful seafood. And we actually make all of these itinerary lobster baked uh, themed cruises. So you're definitely going to get some of that while you're there uh, on this itinerary. So I just want to mention a couple things that we're going to see along here. Of course, there's that lobster and you're going to really enjoy that. I know I do. And we actually do some uh, lobster baked uh, Themes, or it's a lobster bake theme, but we actually do some lobster bakes on the beach. So oh, wow, we that'd have, be fun. Uh, yeah, we have a company come in and they actually show our guests how we do uh, the lobster bake, you know, with the seaweed and, and building the, the fire and so forth to uh, cook them. So it's really a lot of fun. And uh, of course, we have a city tour that we do there in, in, uh, in uh, Portland. And one of the great features here in Bar Harbor is um, the Acadia uh, National Park, where we get to uh, visit the park. Um, and then you saw the lighthouses earlier. You're going to see a lot of lighthouses. They have a wonderful um, trolley there. But here in Rockland, uh, there's uh, a, a nice museum that we take the guests to. It's called the uh, Sail, Power, and Steam Museum and it's a guided exploration. And uh, we also have, um, we also do this really neat thing called Rockland to Thompson. It's a, a Maine State uh, Prison Showroom experience. And this day when we're in Rockland is one of the lobster bake luncheons. That one is when we do the one out on the beach. And um, I, I did get to do that one time. It was really fun. Um, so, um, those are some of the experiences. Let's see, this is uh, the ship that we do that program on. It's called the Independent, and it's only a hundred guests, and uh, it's about it's about eighty five percent balconies, 
Um, the other is our windows, uh, large picture windows on here. As far as the accessibility, uh, we have one um, accessible stateroom, but we, the elevators on the ship go from the bottom to the top of the ship. Um, it's a very small ship, as you can see, so um, it's not a whole lot of walking um, from one end of the ship to the other. And most of these ports, we're docked, you know, right inside the town, so it's very easy. And, and then, you know, we do look out for those guests that need assistance in walking or getting on or off the ship. We usually always have a... Um, a golf cart there that's going to meet them and uh, they can uh, you know take them up to where the motor coach is for the tours and so forth. Okay um, just a I, quick question for you Cindy uh, on the on this ship uh, are the cabin sizes large like they were on the ones we talked about in Alaska? Well, that's a good question because I got a picture of one here for you. <laughs> so they're pretty good size uh, they average uh, they're average around 250 square feet. So they're pretty good size. And we do have single staterooms on here too. They're not going to be quite as large, but they're also very good size as well. So, and, and remember it is a small ship. So overall, we've got quite a few lounges on here and we've got nice size staterooms uh, that you would definitely enjoy. Well, and I was going to say the, the shortage or the fact you only have one accessible cabin, unless somebody needed a roll in shower, other than that, everything else will work for somebody that's got a small scooter or a wheelchair because the big thing in a, in a traditional cruise ship is the place to put it. it, it right. I can find lots of parking places in that room. Yes, these rooms are spacious. So this is across our fleet, regardless if it's one of these coastal ships or it's a uh, one of our new modern boats on the rivers or our paddle wheelers. I mean, you know, we're American companies, so we've made everything big, you know. Uh, so we have the big lounges, we have the big staterooms, we have uh, large uh, bathrooms in all of these uh, staterooms. So um, yeah, definitely you can fit a, a scooter in here, you can plug in. Um, yeah, definitely move to room to move around and put all your belongings away and so forth. So it's just not cramped quarters. Um, so it, it's, it's nice and comfortable for our guests. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, the main coast, you know, is a, a, a great itinerary that we do, and um, I would definitely recommend it. It, it stays uh, strictly in Maine. It's, it's not going outside of Maine. Um, the next okay. one I want to talk about really Okay, okay. About I, I, got, I got it. One quick story I have to tell. Okay. Because yeah, this is a Maine story because I was there on a, a cruise line, went to Bar Harbor, and we did a, like a, a lobster pot tour thing. And uh -huh. do you know how it's, did you know that you can make a lobster fall asleep and then like kind of hypnotize them or where they'll stay asleep? No, I didn't know that. How do you do that? Yeah, you, the, you rub, I think it's their head, but there's something you can rub on them and then you can stand them with the tail up on them, balance them on the pincers. And we passed this lobster all over the whole group, you know, and he never moved a, never moved a muscle. And then we put uh, him back in the water. Oh, oh good. Well, Yes, you would. You played around with him and tricked him a little bit, hypnotized him or whatever. And I'm yeah. glad you brought him back. That's good. That's good. Okay. Well, the New England Isles cruise is uh, absolutely one of the favorites because look where we're going here: Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, Block Island. These are definitely places that are not so easy to get to. But we've all always wanted to go to these places, and so we do this. New England cruise out of um, Providence, Rhode Island, round trip. It's a seven night. And we've got great things there, as you can see, in Martha's Vineyard. We do a wonderful tour. It's called Views of the Vineyards. Uh, and we, we get to see all the beautiful gingerbread cottages um, and all the cute little quaint things uh, in Martha's Vineyard. You know, it's a very wealthy area as well. Uh, yeah. Beautiful homes. Um, then you've got Nantucket, and that's also another beautiful place to discover. It's a little island there, Nantucket Island. Um, like I said, you know, people would love to go to these places. They're not easy to get to, and they're expensive when you go there and stay and eat. So this is a great way to do it by doing it on a small ship that's going to take you right there into the town. 
Um, in Block Island, there's also this beautiful scenic um, bluffs and preserves that you'll see uh, in beautiful Block Island. And of course, Newport, you've got that uh, Avenue of the Mansion, the tour that we do there, um, which is exciting to see. And you get to see maybe some celebrities or people that you know from on TV, like Judge Judy um, has got a home around there. So uh, that's some great stuff to see. And then um, Bristol, we've got a um, museum there that we go to. We also do a another lobster bake luncheon uh, that we do here in uh, Bristol on this itinerary. But every day, like I said, you're going to get lobster every day. So um, some of the other places that we stop, of course, is New Bedford, where there's a, a, a whaling museum there. Um, there's also a beautiful uh, waterfront, and we do a waterfront walking tour. Um, so we've also got shuttle service in most of these towns. So if you wanted to go off and explore too, you can do that as well. So, okay. I mean, they're all small little places. You're not going to get lost or anything like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, looks, um, looks so interesting. Yeah, these were just a couple of the ones I was just talking about. There's that Harbor Cruise. This is uh, one that we offer in New Bedford. And that one we do explore the, the lighthouse there. And um, the captain is very involved with the guests and they talk about the local fishing industry. They focus on the scallops and uh, it's fun. You get to eat the seafood, uh, the locally sourced scallops and fish. So it, it's a nice day, it's a nice day. Okay. And then there's um, a picture here I wanted to show you of Nantucket. You can see all those sailboats out there. It's a yeah. really fun time of year. I think, you know, the summer up there is a fun time of year. It is beautiful. And Martha's there. Vineyard, the wonderful, uh, beautiful gingerbread cottages that you see. There are so, all of them so unique and ornate with their own personality. Okay. And so it, it, uh, here's a piece of trivia. Do you know where else you find a lot of gingerbread uh, cottages that you probably wouldn't expect? Where? Key West. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah, we, we did a tour of Key West, and that was one of the things they brought up is, is that, that they, and they even have like the widow's walk up on top of, uh, there's at least one of the houses there that they pointed out a widow's walk, which was all uh, reminiscent of what we see in New England, you know, seafaring villages, but it, it, there it is in Key West. Yeah, I would say that. I, I was actually hoping to make a trip to Key West this year, but I haven't gotten down there for a while, but it is, uh, it's always a fun place to see. And I love all the artsy looking and the colorful, colorfulness of all the houses and how different they are. But this is, uh, you know, just a picture here of Newport. Just, you know, one of the mansions that you would see. Oh, very and nice. This is our ship that we operate there, the American Star, which is only 100 guests. And it's pretty much uh, similar to the Independence. We have three small ones like this uh, uh, of our coastal ships. So they do those, you know, really intricate, um, detailed itineraries that go to those small islands. So. Um, it's a it's a nice little ship. Um, looks like this one's not so much balcony ship. Um, yeah, this one is a little bit. It looks a little different than um, the other than the Independence. I'd have to look up and see how many balconies um, that we have. I know we have usually three categories. We have three categories of balconies, and then uh, we've got three quarter uh, categories with no balconies. And you know. On that itinerary, everybody wants a balcony. So, you know, you really do have to, if you want to do them and you want a balcony, you have to book early because, you know, these uh, coastal programs are pretty much exclusive to us. We don't have anybody that does them. So, you know, if you want to do them, you do them with us, you know, so, uh, and you book early. And, you know, after this past year, people are really anxious to get out there and get moving again. They still want to stay close to home, uh, which we offer 35 different itineraries in the United States. Um, 
So we've been really busy and, you know, we're really grateful that we've been operating for uh, the last 10 weeks. And, um, you know, our guests are really so happy to be cruising with us and happy to be experiencing and traveling and seeing the beautiful country. And yet they feel very comfortable uh, with our protocols and they know they have the peace of mind, they're close to home and so forth. So uh, this is the Grand New England, which is a bit different than the New England Isles because this one is actually a 10 night cruise. So it has a bit of what we did on the uh, New England Isles, but we have some additional stops, as you can see, like um, um, Gloucester, Mass, which we have a um, the beautiful Hammond Castle there that we can take the guests to. Um, also, that area is known very much for maritime. And we have a really fun excursion that we offer too. It's a schooner sailing. If you want to have some adventure, you can do that as well. Um, also Provincetown, which is an, another uh, great area to see. And uh, on up the East Coast, so you'll ha actually have uh, 10 nights. So that's called our Grand New England. And we do that on a different uh, coastal ship, um, the uh, American Constitution, which is our larger uh, coastal. And it is 170 passengers. And you can so see it's pr primarily balconies on here. We have a few that are not, but mostly balconies. Okay, and so is this the sister to the one that's in, in Alaska? Yes, yes. I say it looks Both familiar. Those two are the larger ones, the Constellation and the Constitution. And we actually build these ships ourselves. They're built in Southbury, Maryland at our shipyard. And um, they are, you know, great ships to to get in and out of these places. And uh, for this itinerary, you know, we use the Constitution for doing our American Revolution cruise out of Baltimore. We do our uh, Grand New England. And we do also in the fall, we'll use the uh, this ship as well for the Hudson on the fall foliage. And I believe the same one accessible stateroom, which is usually what we have on every ship. But um, all the ships uh, are very roomy. They have large state rooms, um, you know, the doors are the doors are pretty wide size. We have the elevators that take them from the bottom to the top deck and so forth. So they've been pretty manageable um, for those guests that, you know, may have some um, walking, um, you know, slow walking or some of those things like that. And even wheelchair, we, you know, we do get people in wheelchairs as well. And, um, they bring along a guest or a companion with them to help them out, but we'll help them out as well. So um, then lastly, I want to talk about that Cape Cotter. Well, actually, I got one more after that to talk about, but this is the Cape Cotter. And this is the one we just started. And actually, we were going to start it last year, but with everything that happened, we didn't operate, so we couldn't do it. But the beautiful Cape Cotter, um, that's going to be a round trip from seven night from Boston. And you can see it's got some of the same uh, ports as the um, as the uh, other New England does. But um, one of the unique things that we do here is we go into the um, uh, Oceanographic uh, Museum there, the Oceanographic, the Woods Hole Oceanographic, actually the institution. And we actually get a behind the scene tour with the scientists there and, and the engineers. And they show us the, the facilities. Um, we get to see the vehicles and the robots. Um, and, you know, of course, they are doing all the exploring on the ocean ex ocean uh, today, this um, wonderful uh, institution there. So it's really quite intriguing to get to see this and experience. And that's an exclusive tour for us. So um, again, we just started it. So our first guests are going. This week, uh, they'll be there on day three. So it'll be uh, really fun for them to get to see this, you know, kind of behind the scene tour. So that's our Cape Codder. <clears throat> and let's see what else. Oh, here's Gloucester, which I wanted to show you that Schooner sailing. That would looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? It does. That one doesn't look particularly accessible. <laughs> 
Well, you know what? It looks like it's about ready to tip, but I know those guys have it under control. They've been doing this for a long time. So it still looks like fun. You know, it's it, we have so many I, wonderful, I, fun things to see and do here. So uh, Yeah, and that would, you know, for my wife, that would work okay. Um, as long as you, you know, I, I see some of those sailing boats where they have those boards out the side, you got to climb out on the boards. I don't think she'd like that so much, but yeah, <laughs> no, and, and this is actually a picture of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, too. Uh, so you can see our guests going up there and that. Oh, That's, very cool. Seems like something, yeah, really fun stuff to do. We've had a lot of really new great tours into our programs, more adventurous type tours if you want to be more active. Uh, so we've got a lot of active, we've got a lot of history and culture, we've got breweries, we've got all kinds of different stuff for you to see. I mean, we have so many wonderful things to see right here. And then I always, always love the Hudson River, the fall foliage. It's just spectacular. You can see the beautiful trees and the change and the colors of the trees. And I love this itinerary. Um, it goes out of New York City. And these are places I've always wanted to go, but I haven't been to any of these stops uh, uh, on the Hudson here. Uh, the Sleepy Hollow, the West Point, Hyde Park, Catskills, on up to Albany. And we do this uh, round trip uh, New York on the Hudson. And we do it in uh, usually late September, and October, and we put all three of our coastals that I showed you today, all three of them will do the itinerary. So we put a, as much capacity there as we can during that time, and they just sell out. No question, they're, you know, they're gone. So um, like we do in West Point, we have a guided West Point exploration tour that we do. Um, we've got the Vanderbilt Museum in Kingston. Um, we have a tour called Walk Over the Hudson or the Maritime Museum in, um, in Kingston as well. In Albany, we've got an Albany uh, city experience. Um, we do in Troy, we actually have a, which is right outside of Albany, we do a, uh, a lock and dam cruise that we offer. And Very unfortunately nice. I haven't gotten to do these things myself. So, I, they sound exciting to me, but uh, I know that'd be great fun to to participate in them. And then in the Catskills, I've always heard about the Catskills. Um, we there's a, a beautiful site, National Historic Site there called Thomas Cole, um, and also there's uh, some other activities that we do on the historic sites. And we've got a program called Catskill Active as well. So. Uh, great tours. And in Sleepy Hollow, we have the Gothic Lindhurst Mansion. Uh, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? It does. And uh, Washington Irving Sunnyside. And then, you know, it's always fun to go from New York City. Um, you can, I'd come in a day or two before. Always, you know, all of our ships always leave at 1.30. So you always want to come in a day early. You don't, you don't want to miss uh, you don't want to miss the boat, basically, yeah, yes. because uh, your flight is delayed for some reason. So uh, I would always recommend that you come in a day before. So um, those are beautiful itineraries. Here's one on West Point. I would love to see that. And I know they just had a big graduation there at West Point. And you could see with all the fall foliage. Um, yep, there is that is amazing. Field. Yeah, there is um, the uh, one of the historical sites there in Catskills. And this is that uh, Gothic Landhurst Mansion. That looks pretty interesting to see. That was all of them. Okay. Well, very nice, uh, Cindy. I, uh, like I said, those look like amazing itineraries. And the nice thing, because they are U.S., uh, pretty much all of the places you stop are going to be accessible. You know, they have, you know, you're going to stop basically right in town. It's not like you need a bus ride somewhere. Um, if they, if there is bus rides involved, uh, is it going to be like it is in Alaska where you have an accessible bus, assuming they can navigate a step or two? Yes. And, yeah, and I mean, we are in the USA. A lot of these places have elevators or whatever, but you know, we're aware of all the landscaping wherever we go. And we do share this information with our guests for the 
for the tours, you know, the activity level that it is, and if there's steps or this or that, we're going to tell you. Usually, if there's steps or places, we'll have a little golf cart or something that takes our guests around to another side or entrance um, so they can avoid that. Um, it just depends on the actual tour and what we're going to see, uh, what what the situation may be. But most places, um, you know, are equipped for uh, guests with uh, walking challenges. Okay. Well, yeah. very nice. Yeah. I um, One of these days, like I said, I'm going to have to get up and uh, take some of your cruises there because that does look like a lot of fun. Uh, I know. I told you, you're going to go sometime. You're going to go. Oh, I'm yeah. going to definitely go. Um, you know, I, I think that the, they're all look amazing. I, um, in fact, uh, I, I have to have you back on at least one more time because we've got to talk about the Pacific Northwest and because there's some amazing itineraries you guys have out there as well. And we can talk about what's accessible and uh, those ships. So, uh, again, uh, it's a good thing that you're back. Now, one, one thing I would say is for everybody that's watching, and I think you'd agree with this is if you're interested in any of these itineraries, you could check for this year. There's probably not a lot of availability, but you should definitely be booking now for next year. Because if you don't book now, you're going to start to miss out on the cruise you want. You could miss out on the cabin you want. And so right, right now is the time to be planning these kinds of trips because they're, they are so small. It's not like a, you're not going to be on a vessel where they put 5,000 people on it. And, you know, it's a lot easier to have some availability if you've got 5,000 or 4,000 cabins compared to having only 100 cabins on an itinerary. Yeah, very true. I know people think, you know, when you say, you know, limited time or whatever, limited availability, but it really is the case with us because these are small ships. All of our ships, which we have the coastals, we have the paddle wheels and the new modern boats, they're all under 200 guests. So um, we do fall under different guidelines with this, you know, we're not under the same guidelines of the, of the CDC with the big ships are. So we do have our own uh, protocols and some other rules that we follow, but um, we are back to 100% capacity on board the ships. The ships are very spacious, lots of lounge. Uh, the staterooms are large, as you saw. Um, the uh, HVAC system, air conditioning system, you know, it doesn't go from room to room. It's, you know, solely yours. Um, so we've, we've tried to put everything in place as much as possible for our guests to feel comfortable and confident in traveling with us. And so if you want to go somewhere, you know, if we don't have what we're looking, what you're looking for right now in New England available, you know, we have wonderful other itineraries on the Mississippi, which we do through the end of the year. And um, we have the upper and the lower Mississippi, which are both fantastic itineraries, the Columbian Snake. We have Puget Sound, San Juan Island. And then uh, in the wintertime, we'll come to Florida and we do those beautiful historic South and Golden Isle itinerary from Jacksonville to Charleston or on up to Baltimore. So uh, we pretty much operate something all year. We do operate something all year round, like the lower Mississippi. Um, it will operate through the end of the year. Then it starts up again at like the second week of February. So there's only a few weeks it's not going. And that's one of my favorite itineraries um, as well, the lower Mississippi. I mean, they're all excellent. And you know what? You come home so gratifying because you're going to learn so much history and culture on all these. But even all these New England, I told you they're lobster baked, but we still always have a lecture on board every day. Um, that's going to tell you about the history and the culture and those lobsters and all those things is going to, that he or she is going to tell you. Maybe we have an artist on board as well doing art immersion or some other fun activity throughout the week, you know, that we do, as well as the wonderful tours and the camaraderie that you're going get, to get with the other guests on board, whether you're there with your spouse or companion or if you're traveling as a single. It's such an in intimate atmosphere that everyone gets to know each other very quickly. You all find you have some common interests. You just relax and enjoy. And um, that's what it's all about. And, and hopefully you come back for another cruise. Okay, so now I, I have a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, how much extra is the lobster if you want to have the lobster bait? No, it's nothing extra. Oh, it's, it's included? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Every and what, day, what are, all day, you're going to get lobster. Yes. Okay. And, and how expensive is your drink package? We don't have a drink package. What we do is we include beer and wine at lunch and dinner. And then uh, before dinner, we have a cocktail party with all top shelf liquor. You can have whatever you like. When you get done with dinner, you come out into the lounge. You can watch the entertainment. And then we'll continue the cocktail party through the end of the evening until you, you retire for the evening. So really, you, you know, you're not going to need to buy drinks. We may have some breakfasts that we offer mimosas or Bloody Marys or something like that. But typically, they're, you know, people are not drinking real early in the morning before they go out on their tours. But it, it, everything is plentiful on the ship. The food is plentiful. The portions are large. The choices are many. Um, you know, we really like to take very, very good care of our guests, uh, you know, and give them a lot of attention, feed them well, you know, make them feel comfortable and, and feel like they're at home, basically. So. Okay. So one last question. Uh, how much do you charge for the shore excursions? Okay. So on the coastal product is a little different than the river cruise product. Um, on the coastal product, we do include what we call some featured tours. These are included, they, they're complimentary, and they are escorted by local guides. Then what we have next is our premium tours, and these we would like you to book ahead of time with you, with their um, travel advisor. And these tours uh, are considered premium. They run 20 to $70, and they are offered outside of the time of your included tour, so you can do more than one tour. Then we have these signature tours. And uh, we may have a, you know, a few or maybe one or several, depending on the itinerary. These are one-off tours. They're very limited in availability. So they absolutely must be booked ahead of time. So if you're doing that schooner sailing, that would be a, considered um, a signature tour, okay? And that these the signature tours, they vary in price. Yeah. So uh, you would be able to check the pricing on those, you know, before you book them. But um, those are the types of tours we offer. So actually, you can stay as busy as you want or just relaxed and doing nothing as you want. The choice is there. And keep in mind that, you know, some of the little places we go, like Martha's Vineyard and Block Island, there's not going to be a huge amount of choices in, in tours. You know, just not because they're small places and there's certain things to see there. So yeah. if the town's only a mile square, you only can tour about a mile square. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly but they're sure fun to walk around in those towns yep, yeah and lots of great shopping and things like that well listen cindy you've been a great guest as always i appreciate having you on and uh, so for everybody if you haven't already subscribed do so if you have questions post them in the comments and we'll make sure that cindy gets uh, the questions and we'll find you some answers and we'll see everybody in the next video okay thanks ken